I've built a couple of these in the past and I've found them to be very good. What it is actually is the, if you like, the DC part of a power supply. It's simply you put in your center tapped transformer and out comes plus or minus, plus and minus DC. Now, obviously, it will depend on the input voltage as to what comes out. But I'm using this for the latest version of my amplifier project, and I will require round about plus or minus 50 volts. And the transformer's on its way, but this is actually, all this is is the capacitors and the diodes and an LED, basically. Now, the things that I like about this in particular is this. Here we have no less than five earth connections. Now, that may seem a bit of an overkill, but in reality it's not, because you've got two earth returns from your amplifier power supply, and you would have two earth returns from your loudspeakers. Now, ideally, they would all connect here. And so many of these little boards that you can buy from various companies in China don't have that. They just have one or maybe two terminals for earth. And because you inherently want to use fairly thick cables on this, they just simply don't fit. And you end up having to bodge it or solder them on underneath. And again, you've got two sockets either side for your plus and minus DC, which is again, is exactly what you want, because if you're building a stereo amplifier, you will have two positives and two negatives. So you can put them all on individually. Now I've already assembled some parts on this, um, simply because I've only decided at the last moment to make a quick video on this, just to show something about this little board. Um, I'm not going to show you me assembling it because there's a million different um, people doing very nicely out of such things. But other than to say it's quite suitable for a beginner because all the components are nicely marked and all the components are actually a good specification and they're not rubbish. As you can see on here, the capacitors are clearly marked, which is positive and which is negative. Um, the only one that is a little bit you need to be a bit careful of. One of the power supplies I've had in the past, you can look at it or test it and you think, ah, that's the anode, that's the cathode. And I find that they're not always marked the same way. So you need to test the LED with a battery or even your test meter if you can do such things and decide which actually is the anode and the cathode. Because if you get it round the wrong way, and once you've assembled it, it is a pig to get out again because the capacitors either side here are pretty tall and getting a soldering iron in there, even from the back, is a nightmare. So you, you don't want to do that. You'll notice also that there are quite a few little capacitors apart from the usual electrolytics. These are 0.1 of a microfarad and they're simply used to prevent um, high frequency noise but obviously the large capacitors are are meant for storage and smoothing this is a quick look on the back of the board for no other reason than to show you that the copper areas are large which means that you're going to get very little voltage drop now these are the main filter capacitors and there is eight of them uh, four for each rail, so quite a generous amount of um, uh, capacitance. They're well rated at 63 volts, so I wouldn't personally put much more than around about 50, 52 volts across them. But 52 volts will give you, uh, assuming the amplifier is capable, will give you round about 100 and a, and a bit watts per channel into 8 ohms and probably quite a bit more into 4 ohms. Now it does say Nijicon on there. Whether they are genuine, I don't know. But I've measured them 
and they have a very low ESR and um, seem to be a nice component. Another thing that makes this power supply board pretty good, sorry about the shaking by the way because I've got this on a magnifying glass so you can see it. Well you've seen it now so I can take it away. These are shocky diodes and the bridge uh, rectifier is made up of four of these and for those of you, you that don't know they have a much lower resistance to them so they will theoretically well and in practice pass more current with less voltage drop i.e. and they will also produce less heat because although these are capable of being mounted on a heat sink on this particular circuit they're not mounted on a heat sink and I've not found them necessary um, I've been running these with a um, hundred watt amplifier in the past and they just get warm to touch so clearly a heat sink isn't required a normal silicon diode would probably need a heat sink simply because there's more volts dropped across it and um, therefore an appropriately more amount of heat well i'm going to get to start assembling the rest of this the only thing i would make a comment on is the mounting of the electrolytics if we let's get that out of the way if we look at the end of the capacitor if we can see it clearly you can see the rubber bung in there is slightly proud of the outside of the aluminium can and the effect of this is they they do rock slightly assuming that you push them down as hard as you can they do rock side by side slightly so what I would suggest you do which is what I've done in the past once I've mounted them I squirt a bit of hot glue around the um, edges where it makes contact with the board and it just keeps them nice and firm it's just something that I like everything if you like nailed down so a bit of hot glue around the edges it doesn't look the ultimate in prettiness the board's almost finished now I've just got some more terminals to put in around this side here and you can see where I put the hot glue on there um, it doesn't look pretty but the whole thing is now really stable I mean it was not unstable but still got a few bits to, to pick off here but I would suggest you you put it on there if you can do it a bit better than I have maybe down the sides that might be better in fact I might well um, redo that but it practically it's now rock steady and all fit to go this actually comes in three separate pieces but you need to link them all together There we go, after a bit of messing about, we just need to hold that down while we solder the two end pieces. Well, that's that job finished, and it took me about an hour. Um, wouldn't take you probably as long as that, but simply that I've, I've been filming a bit of pe bits and pieces, and it does um, take its time. Now, the only things I would mention to you, make sure that the diodes are pulled forward slightly because they're not they're not going to get very hot but you don't really want them touching or heating up the capacitors for their long-term use this is one of the mounting holes now if you're not going to mount this using metal chassis or metal screws you will need to take this connection to earth because you can see it is actually connected to two components here now these are the two components it's a capacitor and a resistor and it goes to this terminal which is in fact earth so you do need to earth that terminal if you're going to mount it on wood I don't know why you'd want to mount it on wood but if you did the other ones are all no problem this is one of the other mounting holes and quite clearly you can see there is no electrical connection with that hole. Connection is simplicity itself. 
along the front here, or the back, depending on which way you've got it, these three terminals are AC, center tap, and AC from your transformer. On the other side, simplicity itself again, positive DC and four negative uh, zeros, grounds in other words. And on this side, negative DC from those two terminals. So you can't really go wrong on this. It should work first time. This is where I obtained, uh, I obtained the power supply kits. Now I know it's called knob sound and my mind is already thinking of various jokes, but we won't go into that. It seems to be a reliable company. I've purchased uh, about four of these so far. Well, not about, I've purchased four of these so far and I've never had any problems with the supply or postage and they arrived relatively quickly. So I can recommend it. Now you will find if you look for similar modules that there are others available for less money. Now the thing that makes them cheaper generally is the type of capacitors that's on here. Now these are 63 volt working which means you can easily put 55 volts across them and they're going to be quite happy but some of the cheaper ones are designed for much lower voltages and the maximum voltage is 50 on the capacitors so you wouldn't want to put more than 40 45 at the most across it but and most of the other ones I should say use standard silicon diodes rather than these shocky diodes which I think are a must I mean they're not that much more expensive than a standard diode but would always be my preference now one thing this power supply doesn't have is any kind of fusing built in. Now obviously the mains transformer itself would have a fuse in line with it and so the primary so to speak is protected but it's not protected against any short circuit on the DC side. Now I tend to use these. Um, it's, an, it's an online fuse says he's knocking the camera over and you simply pop your fuse in here and it will protect the power supply and transformer against short circuit these are very readily available online and cost pennies